we'll just say table, because you can make a chart out of table and so on. So much writing my pen out of the ink. Oh my goodness. It's dying on me. I'm going to kind of recap this one more time as soon as I get a new pen. Every time I miss. Okay. So, so here's what, the idea you have this population of a big N, size N. You're taking, you say, I want samples of size, you pick that. So like 10, 5, whatever, I pick 5. The number of different samples you can get out of that population for a certain size, remember you're picking that size ahead of time, like I picked 5, you can't change that, is big N, choose little n. That's how many different samples are possible with, with any situation of a certain size. We take the statistic for every single one of those samples, all 80,730 in this case, um, this is a relatively small population, right? And small sample size. You increase these, you get massive numbers. You organize every one of those statistics with their appropriate, well, the required statistic you've been given, such as the mean or proportion, into a table, and that's called a sampling distribution. Raise your hand if you understand the idea of a sampling distribution. Good, okay. Now let's learn about it. Let's learn really what happens here. I'm going to give you a very simple example to illustrate what sampling distributions are going to mean for us. You ready to follow this example? You got to kind of follow this. We're going to pretend that in the whole world there are only three numbers. The only three numbers you can possibly have are one, two, or five. So if you started counting you'd go I am one years old, then I'm two years old, then I'm five years old, and that's it. Okay, we'd all be five years old, that's it. So there, there's no other value besides one, two, and five. You with me? No other numbers exist. It'd be like having a three-sided die, which is literally impossible, but let's pretend it is for this, this fact. You know, you can't get a three-sided die. But if you, let's pretend you had a three-sided die, the only numbers on there would be one, two, and five, or, or are one, two, and five, and that's it. Okay, let's just pretend you label it one, two, five and you get to roll it. You understand? So the only thing you get out of it is one, two, and five. That's another way to think of this. <clears throat> How many odd numbers do you have? How many even numbers do you have? Okay, thankfully we got that. We got that right. So we got two odd numbers, we got one even number. Can you tell me what's the proportion of odd numbers? What's the proportion of odd numbers? That means, like, almost, not a percentage, but a decimal version of percentage. How many odd numbers do we have? Out of how many numbers total? So our proportion is two-thirds. You'd say two-thirds of these numbers are odd. Are you with me on that? Our proportion is two-thirds. Or the proportion of odd numbers is two-thirds. What we're going to do now, this is not a sampling distribution, by the way. This is looking at the entire population. Understand that this is the population, population proportion. Are you with me? That's the population proportion. Population proportion is a lowercase letter p. So in our case, p equals two thirds. The population proportion of odd numbers in our case, because this is this is our population. You following that, right? That's it. That's all that's possible is one, two, or five. So the population proportion of odd numbers is two thirds. This is a very very simplistic example. I only have three items. This would be three. Okay, that's it. It's all you can choose from is three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create for you with you. A sampling distribution. What we're going to do is we're going to take all the possible samples of size 2.
all possible samples of size 2. So big N equals 3, little n equals 2. Now that something interesting happens, happens here, uh, I'm going to break the rule just a little bit. These are all the different samples that you could get. However, I'm going to label the different orders of these um, as unique samples just so I, the probabilities can come out right because you have the different ordering that raises the probability because you're dealing with two samples of two numbers at a time. So you'd have to multiply and there's some sort of a probability. So I'm going to cheat just a little bit. We're not going to get the, do 3C2 uh, on your calculator real quick. You get three. We're going to have three actually unique samples. However, what I'm going to list out is every possible ordering of those samples. Because out of those three samples, the probability is actually higher for certain ones of them. Does that make sense? So we're, we're going we're gonna to fudge a little bit. There's two ways you can do it. You can change the probability or label out every, every possible choice. So I'll show that to you when I, when I create this. We're going to make a table here. What we're going to do is list out every possible sample on the left, and I'll show you what we want to do on the right. Give me the first possible sample. This is with repetition. So with repetition, remember it's like you're, you're rolling a, a three set of die, which literally is impossible, but let's try that. So what could you get for your first sample? You could, it's like rolling a die. The numbers you could pick out of or pick out of a hat with replacement. You get one one. Couldn't you? Okay. Then you could get one two. You follow? Mm -hmm. Then you could get one what? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run out of room. I need to make my number smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what? Does everyone agree these are the nine possibilities that you could get? Yes, no? Yeah. That's it? Now, I do need you to know something that according to the samples, um, this one and this one are the same. You follow? Mm -hmm. This one and this one are the same. This one and this one are the same. So you have less actual samples than what's listed. However, this is every possible rolling of the die. This is everything that possibly could happen. So if you were to make one, t one sample out of these ones, you'd have to alter the probability of getting those, which we're going to do. So I don't want to alter the probability because this, would, this, is not, this one sample can only happen one time. This sample can happen two different times, as can this one and this one, but not that one. So I don't really want to confuse that idea, so I'm going to keep this listed as different samples. Do you, do you kind of get the, the picture? So even though I know these are the same, for the probability-wise, I'm going to leave them as independent and deal with the probability that way. I'm glad you hope you're still okay on that. Okay, that's a little confusing topic. I'd love to, oh, I don't really get that. Uh, I thought you said that the different order didn't matter for samples. It doesn't, but it does matter for probability. And we are combining the idea of different samples with probability right now. Ready? It's a lot of, a lot of talk. So this is our, our different ends. That's our different ends, our samples. Samples of n equals 2. What I want to do now is I want to figure out the probability that each of these things is going to happen. How many choices do I have? So what's the probability that this one's going to happen? Yeah, we're assuming that the, the die, our three-sided die, is uh, not weighted funny, right? It's a normal three-sided die. So this probability would be one ninth. You okay with that? What's this probability? What's all the probabilities?
here's kind of what I was talking about. If you were to combine these samples, like this one and this one, you'd alter the probability to two ninths. That's the only thing that we do. But I needed to show you this in order to do that. Does that make sense? So the probability for this one would stay one ninth. There's not another one of those. Probability here would be one ninth. It would stay. Probability this one, if you combine it, would be two ninths. That would be two ninths. So far, so good. Okay. Now, if this is the probability. The other thing that we're going to talk about is the sample proportion. The population proportion was this lowercase letter p. In our case, for our population, we had two-thirds of those numbers being odd. There's also another thing we need to talk about, and that's the sample proportion. The population proportion is P, the sample proportion is also P with a little hat. <laughs> P hat. Not kidding. Seriously. I'm not even making that up. It's pronounced P hat. So, isn't that be funny? Aren't you glad you don't have a P hat? P hat. <laughs> P hat stands for, stands for sample proportion. Usually I make stuff like that up just to mess with you guys, but I'm not make, making that up. That's honest. That's good enough as it is. Okay. So firstly, are you okay that these are all of our samples? Yes, no. With replacement. You might also notice that. That I'm doing something with replacement. But in real life, would you ever do that with replacement? If I wanted samples of size 5, would I go, oh, okay, let's pick up, out 5 people. Kayla, what do you think? Okay, good. Uh, can, uh, Kayla, what do you think? Let's pick someone else. Okay, Kayla, what do you think? Uh, let's go to some. Kayla, what do you think? And we need one more. How about Kayla? Kayla, what do you think? Would you ever do that? No, you wouldn't. So why, why, you're going to read something in that section, so why I want you to read that, about why we can consider the width replacement in this situation. Okay, that it explains that in the book pretty well. Read through that, why we are doing this with replacement. It's a good little, little read. I don't remember what page it's on. But read through there. That's going to explain in there why the with replacement versus without replacement, we need the with replacement to do this. So are you okay that all these probabilities are one ninth? We also want to find out the P hat. We're going to learn something right now that's going to, going to tell us a, a relationship between P hat and P, our sample proportions and our population proportion. What is the, what's the P stand for again? The, the P in this case, what are we looking for? Okay, the, yeah, this would be population proportion. This would be sample proportion of what? What specifically, look at our problem. What specifically are we, are we looking at? The proportion of what? Odd numbers. Odd numbers. So two-thirds of these were odd numbers. We're going to go down the list right here and figure out